in the last 20 years, the term design has been stretched in many different directions. So from designing products or uh, graphic artifacts toward the survey design, toward strategic design, toward design of organization, toward design of social organization, toward design of policy, and toward design of policy for social change. And I have to say that uh, London has been a kind of Hollywood of this kind of transformation. Personally, and all the people that I know that are dealing with this kind of story have had in the last 20 years a very important reference to what happened in London and mainly, not in London as a city, but in London as uh, some organization, some center, people and organization that really was studying about social innovation and about new way of doing design. So this emerging design is uh, a design that can be applied practically to every kind of problems and every kind of problems in which the cultural dimension and the practical dimension cannot be separated. Because if it is only a cultural issue, it's not design. If it is only a technical issue, it's not design. For me, somebody called them wicked, wicked problems. I prefer to see simply that are problems in which the human being are there. Because when you cannot separate the practicalities from the culture, it means that it's a human story. So every time that we have some human-related something, artifact, situation, system, uh, we could use our design capability. And uh, the second is that in this transformation of design, what is happening is that uh, the natural design changes from being always referred to what you design, a product, a system, a service, toward a toolkit, let's say a set of capability, tools, methodologies, culture, that define a way of doing things. So it's much more related to a toolkit than to the result, because the result is always the result of many people working together and creating the final object, the final system that we are dealing with. The, another point that is important to be said is not the, all the emerging design and therefore the service design, the strategic design, and all the kind of design that we have are good for sustainability, but they could be also against sustainability, as always has been, also the previous, the previous century design. Sometimes it worked for the good, and sometimes, very often, it worked for the worst, to increase the consumption, to increase the consumeristic attitude. So also the emerging design can use all the new tools for the good, and this is what I, I think, I hope that you will share with me, but it can also work to create even worse society than the one that we have know, known until now. The second point is that uh, we can talk about design, and we have talked for 20 years about design in different ways. All of them can be correct, but we have to understand what we are talking about, because there are at least three different ways of talking about design. There is one point that is the one that for me is fundamental, that design is a human capability. And as therefore, everybody can use this capability to design, because design is a mixture of critical sense, creativity, that imagine how it could be in another way, and the practical sense, that means how it could be in another way, but in a viable way, so that we can do it. And here, if you want being in this place, it's very interesting if what I'm telling now is exactly the same, that is one of the main strategy of RSA, that is about the power to create. And the idea that has been so well presented by Matthew Taylor, that we think that everybody should have the possibility to live a creative life. So this is one of the main statements today of RSA. That is very near to what I'm saying, but the discussion until now is not so much done by the designers. It's mainly done by people that deal with work and the problem of the work in the platform economy. When I say that it's an increasing responsibility for the designer, you can follow in this example. Because at the beginning, there was this nice community. They were doing so well. We work with them. And we have not to develop any specific cultural idea, any specific value, because we are in some way behind the heroes that are already doing something that is very good. But when, if successful, and they start to have more possibility, more technology, and more money, at that point, you need to have expert designer, and they are perfectly designed, user-centered design, so they are really so easy to be used, and so effective by the point of view of the user. But maybe they have other problems. 
And if there are other problems, as I think, we should have a culture that permits to criticize it, to see if and where in the transformation, in the evolution of the innovation from the original invention toward the movement, toward the mature innovation, where things could have been different from this. And this, in my view, is where the culture of design, we should be capable to enter in the process bringing visions, bringing point of view, and discussing, of course, in a modest way, in a dialogical way, by bringing this kind of contribution. Where we can take it, again, from the social innovation. So when we go back to the social innovation as originally had been, we can find that there are a lot of interesting ways of doing that appear. So the original, the inventor of the social innovation generate a new sense of time. Normally, there is a more slow time, that is a kind of ecology of time. There is a different sense of work. People are doing something that they like, so they reintroduce the notion of work. There is a new sense of place, so they re are place builders. And finally, and mainly, there are a different idea of relationships and the quality of the relationships. All this could be the beginning of a new story to be an interesting future should propose an idea of prosperity, and the prosperity could be the prosperity of this kind of interaction that are to be more richer. <laughs>